Hello. <laughs> what a debacle. What a, I was streaming. Everything was fine. I swear we were just having a good time with Amber Heard and the Johnny Depp trial. And I got to sexual assault or something. And it was just like, just gone. Gone. Okay. Man. It was just crazy. I'm still like, I'm still surprised by how bad it was. Now, what are we going to do today now because of this? Well, we'll just, we'll just do a, maybe an abbreviated version, maybe a full version. Who knows? But that was wild. I got to check my, um, I'm just happy to be with you because I was, I was doing my thing, just broadcasting away. And all of a sudden, like the computer, you heard, like I went back and replayed it. You hear the noise. Okay. You hear this, you hear everything unplugging. And then all of a sudden everything just blew up on my end. Like I couldn't do anything. I didn't have a mouse. I couldn't even, I mean, it was just bad. Like my, like I have this stuff on my table and it just all went dead. And that's kind of the fun of a live stream. I mean, am I embarrassed that it happened? Not really. Not really. I, I mean, what do you do? You just start over. It's the way it is. But, uh, man, it's going to put me behind by a lot today. That kind of hurts. Okay. Well, let's get back into it. I mean, why not, right? Um, so anyway, we're talking about we we're talking about this article about the ACLU, and uh, let me just you know today's going to be one of those days I can already tell. All right, here we go. Now we've actually been, now we're, now you're actually on the article with me. It says uh, so Amber Heard. It says uh, it said she was supposed to promise three point five million to the ACLU, uh, and then she's a little short on the cash. Uh, the scrutiny of Heard's giving trial comes as trial comes as. I'm sorry, the scrutiny of Heard's giving comes as trials underway in the $50 million defamation lawsuit Depp filed against her. Depp has alleged that a 2018 op-ed in which Heard described herself as a victim of domestic violence falsely implied that he had abused her, causing him movie roles and other opportunities. Opportunity uh, Attorneys for Heard have said, said she was physically and sexually assaulted by Depp, and that's when everything went crazy on my computer pretty crazy then often when he was drinking or using drugs the op-ed fell within her right to free speech while preparing for the current defamation trial Depp sued the ACLU to determine whether Heard had donated the money she pledged in October in August of 2021 a New York judge granted Depp and his legal team permission to determine that the op-ed in question came out of Heard's relationship with the ACLU which named her an ambassador in October of 2018. The group helped Heard write and place the piece in the Washington Post. An email showed that pub publication was meant to be around the same time that her movie Aqu Aquaman was released. Now let's let's talk about how slimy the world is right now. Okay, the woman. Now look, sexual abuse, uh, harassment, all of these things are bad. Okay, all these things are bad. Don't. Don't kid yourself. Okay. Now, how bad is it when you use sexual abuse and physical abuse by your spouse as promotion for your movie? I mean, seriously. Seriously. I mean, really bad. Like, Evil, evil people bad. And it just says in this article on BuzzFeed now, is BuzzFeed the beacon of journalism? I, I don't think so. But the group helped Heard write and place the piece in the Washington Post. An email showed that publication was meant to be around the same time that her movie Aquaman was released. Do you see the strings that they're pulling? Do you see the games they're playing? I mean, seriously. Oh, the op-ed initially mentioned Heard's relationship with Debt. Doherty testified, but any mention was cut to protect Heard from breaking the non-disclosure agreement she signed with Depp as part of finalizing her divorce or their divorce. This is an evil, evil group of people. Really bad. 
The language that wound up in the final op-ed piece was very different from the original language that Robin Shulman, an ACLU communications strategist, included in the op-ed after having spoken with Amber about her personal experiences, Doherty said, during his December deposition, which was played in court Thursday. He clarified that the final language was different because it did not refer directly to Ms. Hurd's relationship with Johnny Depp. My God. My God. What a trash human being these people i mean just anyone involved with this one that you would take something so serious as sexual abuse and domestic violence and use it to your uh personal gain but to promote a movie i mean come on i have no sympathy for these people none they lost it let's get into the uh, mortgage race today let's take a look it's down here this is zero realty stl.com if you're ever interested in seeing what the rates are they're on the page at the bottom uh, 5.40% a rise in 10 basis points from yesterday that's not great that's not great when rates are up borrowing is down or more expensive the fed has a real problem on its hands and it'll be interesting to see nobody will get fired of course they they may have run up the bubble you know, they may have caused the housing bubble, but uh, no one will get fired. They'll actually, I'll get jobs at university or something afterwards, so they'll be fine. It's just the people that go to work every day that will suffer when they got to go buy eggs and they're $6 a dozen. But, you know, they don't have, to, you know, when you're making six figures. What do you care, right? Yeah. Anyway, here we go. Now, I haven't, I don't know. We're going to go through this. I didn't get to check it ahead of time. I'm sorry. Um, as you can tell, things kind of just went sideways on me. Um, so let's let's look at the luxury homes in portland oregon um i gotta get i mean i am i am discombobulated let's look at this house i believe i saw this one before i, I believe we've gone over it before no i don't think so now because it's only been on the market 70 days let's take a look it says it's a 4.9 million dollar home single family 70 days on the market with a two-car garage built in 1980 32 pictures i'm good with that now let's see the property details. Oh, not very big. That's good. Live your dream in the ultimate modern, sleek, and dramatic Portland Heights view home. Floor to ceiling glass ceilings with views of mountains, city, and rivers. Sophisticated, yet casual and inviting. This home provides an open floor plan for many lifestyles. Fully renovated with high-end hardwoods. Inlaid tile floors. Gourmet kitchen. Den library with fireplace. Spacious owner's suite with luxury bath. Game room. Three private decks. A gated exterior front entry with oasis-inspired landscape equipped with built-in fire pit. That didn't make any sense to read it. Listed 21722, removed 31222, relisted recently. Let's take a look. So it is very modern. It's very modern. I'm just testing to see if you can see it because it's it's very nice. And here we go. 32 pictures. I mean, that's a nice kitchen. There's your views. I just want, just as, as real estate agents go, this here is uh, suspicious. Why would you only halfway open the, 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 the window or the door that's on the, that has a window? What could be right in this space here? I don't know if you can see my mouse, but what could be in the space there? that's causing uh, you to want to hide half of it. I mean, this is just, you know, realtor stuff that you would kind of know if you were playing the game. Beautiful uh, sun, sunlit natural lighting. Look at that. Very yellow and very blue. You know, for a contemporary home, as you know, I'm not a huge fan. It's a little small, 6,800 square feet. Uh, but for a contemporary home with the views that this home has and with the style that it has, I feel like it's a, a great, a great contemporary home, a great model of a contemporary. Some of them are so garish. Some of them have no, uh, warmth, no, no real. I mean, this one does, this is a cool house. Okay. So that's number one house. Number one. Now let's look at another house. House number two. Now this is going to be a regular, you know, conventional style, um, home let's take a look at it 4.9 million dollars it's a five bedroom four bath 
6,200 square feet, three car garage built in 1968. It's been on the market for only 20 days. Let's look at the property details. And I love these small property descriptions. This that's that's great. We don't need a we don't need a novel. So anyway, over three acres of privacy and southern views surrounding this stunning home. Tucked amongst the majestic treed hillsides of Portland, this 1968 home is an unexpected sanctuary. Tennis and swimming, gardening and hiking, this home boasts the perfect retreats minutes from Portland. The second owners have restored one of Portland's best well-positioned private home sites. Award-winning architect Bob Thompson redesigned the main floor, living areas, and kitchen bringing new life to an already classic beauty. Let's look at the history. I mean, literally just listed uh, the eighth. And for a $4 million home, you know, it hasn't been on the market too long, 20 days. It's got your uh, solar, so that's nice. Got your kitchen. Okay. I love that range hood. That's something I haven't seen before. So to me, what they've done is they've taken a, um, a traditional outside of the home, a traditional exterior, and then they've gone with a contemporary interior, which is kind of cool. I mean, look at that view. You can't, no one can fight that. Um, so there's a dog and that's a real dog. It's not a stuffed dog. So anyway, it's got a pool. I like the pool. It's got views. It's a nice home. $5 million seems like a lot for 6,000 square feet, but the other house that's contemporary, also the same, same price. The, the views at the other home are a little more stunning, I think. But, uh, it's a nice home. All right, one more. I, I, as you know, I don't like, I don't like that being the first picture. Why are we doing that? What does this give you? Why is this great here? Why, why would you do that? House built in 1949, 10 days on the market. It's $4.95 million, 5,400 square feet. I mean, the, the other house was, the acreage was like three acres. It says, unparalleled elegance and breathtaking Mount Hood, Adams, St. Helens, and city views abound in the Portland Heights' best-kept secret. Stunning craftsmanship throughout. Crema Marfil marble slab. I don't know what that is. Lux Anigree millwork. Two primary suites with sumptuous sitting and dressing rooms, offices, and stellar spa bathrooms. Flow from the chic sun patio with waterfall pool through walls of glass doors to covered view veranda with grill. Two showroom garages. Wine cellar, custom medium room, your private executive enclave awaits. Property history, it was just listed like 10 days ago. So, hey. Now, again, I, I don't like the, this being the first picture. But I don't have the listing. So, they don't really care what I think. So, we're going to get a, we're get, again, now we're not going to get the front of the house, are we? Okay, four pictures in, we don't know. Now we're inside. We haven't gotten a picture of the front. Is the front of the house ugly? Is that what it is? By the way, when you're going to show, when you're going to put in the description, you can see the mountains and you can see all kinds of things in a view. Then you need to be able to see the view in the pictures of the listing, in my opinion. Now, all these listings had about 30 pictures, so maybe there's a limit on the pictures that you can produce in their MLS. Um, but I'm, I'm good with that. Anything under 50, I'm, I'm totally good with. There's your view. It was in the listing. That's the way it should be. Good job. Um, nice kitchen. Now, like again, realtor eye, okay? See that house right there? Like, it's like right in your view. So, I mean, if I would have been the photographer, which I'm not, I would have, I would have cut it right there. And I'm, and I'm saying that, I'm just telling you what I would have done. I, I mean, maybe you'll say, well, that was a jerk move. Well, I'm sorry, but I don't want, I want you to think of you being in this house, not some other house that you're staring at. That doesn't work. This, by the way, never, like, don't take this the wrong way. If, if, if you see this, stop it immediately. Unplug it and tuck it underneath the chair because it just looks stupid. Now, understand, I've had, I've had listing photo shoots where we didn't see something, and then that was the only picture we could use. We weren't going to go back and reshoot the whole house. So I get it. That could have been the case. There's your garage. I mean, I really would have liked to have seen the front of the house. 
one picture of the curb appeal would have been really nice for $4.9 million. What do you think? I'm just going back to my, my space. All right. Well, with that, I think we should go into the articles. I, I thought that I had two good articles today, and I do. But uh, man, tomorrow I'm going to have to get up early, and I'm going to have to get my articles in order because I am, I am behind. I only have my three articles. Anyway, man, I thought this was interesting. I thought I should bring it to you. You know, the National Association of Realtors is either suing or being sued every point of every day. It's, it's terrible. It's terrible, but let's go through this. It says the National Association of Realtors asked Supreme Court to protect consumers from lawsuits when making floor plans of their homes. The filing comes after the Eighth Circuit ruling leaves homeowners vulnerable to onerous and unnecessary liabilities. Uh, this was, came out April 7th, um, but it says the National Association of Realtors today filed an amicus brief with the U.S. Supreme Court in an effort to protect American consumers from a recent decision of the United States Courts of Appeals for the Eighth Circuit. The, judges, the court's ruling misrepresents federal law and would invalidate decades of legal precedent by allowing copyright infringement lawsuits to be filed against homeowners who make or display floor plans of their own homes. Now, you know me, and I've talked about this a number of times. If you're going to have a listing in today's market, okay, you should have a floor plan as part of the listing. I mean, no question. And all of my listings do have floor plans because I think it's very important. Um, sometimes from the pictures, uh, you don't really get a good sense of how the rooms go together. But with that floor plan right there at the end, you can make a pretty good decision about whether or not it's worth going to go see or not, uh, depending on just how the, how the thing's laid out. So the brief was alongside, introduced alongside 18 groups. <sighs> representing consumers and professionals throughout the U.S. real estate industry, including the Redfin Corporation, the Zillow Group, the American Property Owners Alliance, and CoreLogic. So myself, Deerwood Realty, two real estate agents. I mean, we keep the doors open and we, we do a pretty good job. But you're not going to see me being involved in uh, national precedent-setting lawsuits. I'm at the mercy of the larger players in the market now. The big companies own up to 60 to 65% of the marketplace. So I'm operating in that other 40%. And you're never going to see me in a lawsuit that's got national implications like that. I'm just not big enough. Uh, so then it says the, the U.S. housing market accounted for roughly 18% of our country's GDP in 2020. Uh, the Eighth Circuit's decision not only puts countless consumers at risk of costly, burdensome litigation for making a floor plan of their own home, but it also strains a key sector of America's economy and threatens a critical tool of transparency for, for potential home buyers. Okay, now it says Congress specifically allowed for homeowners to create pictures or other pictorial representations of architectural works without fear of liability when they crafted when crafting the Copyright Act of 1976. Many home buyers rely on floor plans and real estate listings to decide whether to purchase a residence, and their ability to secure financing for that transaction is often contingent on an appraisal that requires the creation of a floor plan. The brief reads. Huh, I didn't know that. Anyway, after acquiring a dwelling, homeowners will often make floor plans to help them tackle installations, arrange furniture, and complete do-it-yourself projects. And many jurisdictions require homeowners to submit floor plans before they renovate their property. That's true. The National Association of Realtors 2021 Home Buyers and Sellers Generational Trends Report found that nearly roughly two-thirds of home buyers listed floor plans as very useful in the online home buying process rank behind only photos and detailed property information as their most valuable resources. So important are the floor plans, in fact, to the average U.S. consumer as they make one of the most consequential decisions of a lifetime, that this category ranked ahead of other key educational resources and disclosures such as neighborhood information and virtual open houses and price data on recently sold local homes. That is not that is not the way I see it. We go to a house and someone wants to write an offer. They really, really do care about the comps which are recently sold local homes. But anyway, uh, you know, I don't know how in the weeds this, this, this uh, lawsuit is. Um, I just think that every single listing should have, it should have a floor plan. There's just no question. Uh, and if you see one of my listings ever, you'll see that it has a floor plan. You know what? When I do get a list, I don't get very many listings. I, I have a lot of buyers. Um, I don't know how that worked, but it, it, it obviously didn't work to my favor this year. 
or last. Uh, but anyway, I'll show you a listing when I pull one up. You can see what I do for my marketing. I think that's I think that's important. I think I think we should all of us as uh, consumers should expect if you're going to pay someone to list your home, they, they should do a good job. They should do a good job listing it. That's all I'm going to say. Next article: Housing inventory turnaround possible. Uh, the new survey. So this is from the Realtor Magazine. It said, "Now, do you believe that?" I mean, that's the big. I think to me really the biggest problem let's let's just kind of maybe couch it a little bit first of all let's assume that um there's there's two things as far as demand that i would say is going on one you have the interest rates that were great well and then you've got the pandemic causing people to rethink how they want to live in their home and the uses for the particular rooms and then number three would be, okay, you have all these people looking for homes and there's not enough inventory out there at all. And, and that's true. But if the people stopped looking for houses, you wouldn't have as much of an inventory problem. Right now, you have a serious inventory problem. I mean, you know, 30 offers on a, on a listing is not unusual. It's, it's pretty terrible. But anyway, a new survey shows how many home, uh, shows many homeowners plan to list their home over the next six months with high expectations for making a profit on the sale. Now, I don't believe this at all. It says 64% of about 3,000 consumers recently surveyed by Realtor.com said they intend to sell their home this spring or summer. That could bring welcome relief to a housing market that has been starved for inventory. I don't believe that. I don't believe that 64% of 3,000 consumers surveyed by Realtor.com said they intend to sell their home this spring or summer, or if that's actionable information. This is me, okay? While sellers are expected to hold the upper hand in 2022, navigating the listing process remains a challenge, particularly for those also buying in today's fast-paced market, says George Rattiu, Senior Economist and Manager of Economic Research at Realtor.com. Homeowners who, all, who are ready to move forward with pandemic-delayed plans will find plenty of opportunity this spring and summer, although accelerating inflation is leading to higher, higher housing costs and living expenses. Many buyers remain interested in finding a home. At the same time, the recent housing trends suggest demand is beginning to moderate as higher mortgage rates push monthly payments out of some buyers' budgets, underscoring the long-term need for more affordable inventory. Their idea of affordable and my idea of affordable are two different things. Homeowners have great expectations for when they do decide to sell. Aspiring sellers responding to the survey say a top reason is the desire to profit from the current market. But that doesn't make any sense to me. Here's why. If you, say you got a three bedroom, two bath home that is currently $250,000 and you bought it for maybe $200,000, okay? There's $50,000 there to play with. You go find another home, three bedroom, two bath, or four bedroom, three bath, that's gonna be the same value as what you're selling. It's not gonna happen. Millennials are expected to represent nearly half of sellers who plan to list within the next six months. Now, don't know, like, as you know, I hate this idea of, of, of breaking down demographic groups. I think it's stupid. But now, how did all these millennials all of a sudden get a house when in many articles they're saying millennials can't get a house? So how did more than half of them get a house and now they're selling it when they're just entering the marketplace in the first place? It doesn't make any sense. They have a financial motivation to stick to their plans, the survey found. The top reasons for selling are pressure from rising inflation and economic uncertainty. Their top reasons for selling are that. Now, that makes no sense. If, you're, if, if you've got rising inflation, are the house prices supposed to go down? Yes. Will, have they gone down? No. And economic uncertainty. You know what? As long as I've been alive, the economy has been uncertain. Waking up every day is uncertain. They showed higher shares than other generations of wanting to move to a more affordable home and need to sell for financial reasons. So now what are you saying to me? You bought a house that's too expensive and now you need to downsize? That's what that says to me. Maybe I'm just reading it wrong. Regardless of age, aspiring sellers are readying their homes to list. They're taking steps to prepare, such as making repairs, cleaning, and decluttering. The majority of those who have already listed found success. 80% of recent sellers say they sold at or above their asking price. That's hard to believe. 
I mean, I've been looking at stuff and people are like way over asking all the time. They also reported other benefits of selling in the competitive market, such as buyers foregoing repair concessions. That is a big one. Offers within a week, obviously, and waive contingencies like ex- inspections. Now, to me, all these lower numbers, to me, indicate that they expect these things as sellers. That it's become an expectation that you're not going to have to do repairs. It's become an expectation that your house will be listed within a week. Actually, this is normal. This, as long as I've been in real estate, offers within a week. As long as I've been in real estate, if you price a home right, you will get at least one offer within the within two days of when you list a house. So I don't understand. And then waive contingencies like inspections. Okay. Well, what am I proud of here? What am I proud of? Well, I am proud that I got the thing back on the rails. Now, if you... If you put the two uh, recordings together, it's not going to be an hour. It's not going to be an hour. But I have no one chatting with me. No one in the chat today. So, you know, I am recording it, thank God. And it is funny. It is, it, to me, it's funny that it, it screwed up. I don't know if I have the issues fixed. You know, I have more live streams to do tonight. And I have hopefully a podcast this afternoon. But I don't know how to explain it. But it's not going well. Um, with that, I'm going to head out today. What did we learn? Well, we learned that your computer blowing up will stop a live stream dead in its tracks. If you have no access to a mouse, okay, if you can't use your mouse and your, and your tele and your television and your camera is, is, uh, your camera is frozen. Like you're not getting anywhere. It's not happening. It's what I learned. Um, I need to get a new computer, but that's for another day. Thank you for watching. I know it's been tough. And for all of you that are watching six months from now, a year from now, will you please hit the subscribe button? I've got, I believe, 10 subscribers. I'd like to have 100. I'd like to have 1,000. like to have a million. like to have more than I have now. And with your help, I can get there. Thank you again for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow, 9 a.m., same channel, same location.